Well, hi there. My name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm going to make a treat box. I'm going to focus more on the stampy part, but I will let you see the coloring part. I'm using this scallop treat box die from my friends over at Lawn Fawn. And it comes in this one shape and you just make two of them in order to make a box. So what I've done is taken one on scratch paper, cut off the tabs, and then I'm going to line them up as if they are the full box because I'm going to make a scene all the way around the box. So this is what you would do with any box that you have. Figure out what the sides are, how they're going to come together, make it out of scratch paper, and then just start to lay out your scene. I wanted sort of a little town of buildings all the way around the entire thing. So I went to a bunch of different stamp sets. They're all going to be listed in the doobly-doo down below to get other buildings, to get trees, various things. And this is just on scratch paper, so it doesn't matter if I stamp it quite straight or if I get it lined up, because when I put it in the Misty in a few minutes, I will be able to arrange it just perfectly. And even, you know, putting in the, the little fairy and the snowman, I don't even have to get that right. I don't have to do any masking at this point until I'm ready to put it on the actual paper. So I have it on 110 pound cardstock for my, my good one, for my final one, because it's a box, so I want it to be a little heavier. And I'm taking those panels and I'm going to line up my stamps using those panels as a guide in the Misty. Now you need to make sure that your, your base paper is not going to move. So I'm going to throw a little extra just to be sure in case I move something around. A little extra post-it to hold it in place. You can use tape or whatever. And then I'll get one more image on here so I can do three images at one time. And while I have all this together too, I'll also stamp some masks and cut them out. So now I have my base paper down and I can start putting my images in. And voila, there we have a few of them. So I can put my masks over top. This is Judykin's Eclipse Tape that I'm using. And again, links for everything will be in the doobly-doo. And I'm only masking out the ones that I need masked out. I don't need to mask that fairy out that's flying up there because there's nothing behind her. But there's these little buildings behind this fairy. There's also going to be this tree and then a couple other trees. And I debated whether to even use this big tree. I like how it came out on the finished piece, so I'm okay with that. I'm also using some sticky notes now to block off the bottom. I didn't do that on that first house, but if you want the bottom of it to not have anything on it, I'll do that on the other panel here and make sure that there's nothing on the bottom so the outside of my box has an option for nothing stamped on the bottom. But again, I'll put a couple of my images down, get them laid out the way I want, and put some masks over top so I can add some trees to the scene behind. Now this is a winter treat box. You could certainly do it as a, a any other scene with whatever stamps you want, but I'm going to make it a winter treat box, which means there's going to be some sky in the background and some snow all over it. You can stamp the snow. There's one of the stamp sets, the fairy with the little house on the right hand side. That comes with some little snow things, little chunks of snow that you can stamp on top. That would require some masking and I didn't feel like doing it so I decided I'm going to add it later with a white pen. But for the meantime I am going to just color in all the images and I'm going to focus my coloring on parts that are important. I'm not going to fuss with all of the lighting on everything in every single spot because the overall effect of the box is going to be pretty cool and I need to be able to figure out how to do that without wasting a lot more of my time. This is already going to be a hugely long project. The whole thing from start to finish was about two and a half hours. So yeah, you don't want to spend more time than that on it. But I think I'm going to actually hang this one on my Christmas tree as an ornament because it took so long. I might as well do something special with it. Now you can see here, this little house goes down on that bottom panel. There's little, um, score marks, that's what they are, score marks for where you fold the box together and that little house is actually going to go below. When I assemble it, you'll see that I can put that panel on the inside so no one will see it. The one on the left, the piece on the left, has nothing on that bottom because I, I smartly used my sticky notes to be able to make that work. So I'm going to give my little girls some white dresses and red accoutrements. So their headbands and their scarves and earmuffs and things are going to be the red color. I'll throw in some green across all my trees. And I'll use a couple different greens to do a little bit of shading. 
and you can make them all different colors. You don't have to make all the same trees, but I find that having some colors consistent across the whole thing is kind of helpful. So I'm going to have all of my trees across the entire piece be the same. You could make some of the houses green on those side panels as well. I was trying to get this done in a reasonable order because yeah, it was taking a long time. And I did decide to make this little house from the spring fairy set. I decided to make it another shade of green, a different one, just because I didn't want it to stand out. I didn't want any of these things to be like super fairy colored because I wanted it to be a really rich box. So that's the reason for choosing all these colors. I didn't put them on the screen because as you can see, there's a lot of them and I lost track. So I apologize, but again, this is more, this video is more about how to get the thing stamped on there so it makes a scene rather than on focusing on the coloring. And some of this coloring, I'm not doing any shading whatsoever, but there were some places here where I decided I was gonna put some bricks on the little castle. I love that little set that has little fairy, uh, fairy scene things in it that you can use with the fairies, but it's more like dragons and stuff in that set. And I'll add some wood to the doors and now I'll turn them so I can color the little houses on the two side panels. That little set of trees, that little one there, is where the snowman also came from. Or the little set of trees, a little set of houses. Gosh, I can't even talk today. A little set of houses and the snowman came from the same set. It was one of last year's sets. So I'm just going to add a couple different browns and I'm using the same browns throughout the whole thing. I'm not changing out a ton of markers. But then I decided on what the color would be for the background. So this is super sped up. Look how cool it looks when you speed up Copic coloring that much. I'm just coloring a solid blue background. I'm not doing any shading. I'm not doing anything crazy. I did have to re-ink my marker in the middle of this to make sure I got a good heavy coverage and pretty solid and color all of those panels. I also did end up coloring some of the inside of those so that when the box is closed, it's going to not show some white on the back and I'm using some be creative tape to hold this together whenever I do boxes and things I like to use that because it's gonna hold longer so you fold on the the score lines and then put the two boxes together it's pretty self-explanatory once you start seeing how it works this is assembling the two of them put the corners together and then you just pop the top sections into those slits on the side once you're done but you can see right there, I hadn't colored the blue on the inside yet. And here I am putting some white dots now for snow, or you could do it as stars, either one. I'm doing it as snow, which means I'm gonna do some of the white dots right over top of the images themselves, because then it's gonna look like it's snowing in front of them. And I'll put it all over the entire box. And I'm also going to add some snow, since I didn't do any stamping of snow. The set that that tree comes from, that big tree, doesn't have little bits of snow on it. It wasn't a winter set. And I could have used the one from the fairy set in order to add some snow blobs to it and decided I would just do that with my little white pen. So here's one side or two sides of the finished box. You can see all that blue on the top. I colored the inside panels. And I can tie a ribbon onto this and hang it on my Christmas tree instead of putting treats in it. But you could also put treats in it and just put some paper or something inside so that people don't really notice all the coloring through. The color is going to bleed through the paper. That's just how it's gonna be. So here's a couple other videos with some Copic coloring if you're interested in seeing those. Feel free to subscribe if you have not yet and I will see you next time. Have an awesome day. Links are in the doobly-doo to all the products. Bye-bye.